But this time we're going for the distribution of the sample mean for other random variables. Previously we did it for the distribution of the sample mean for a normal random variable, but this time population that we'll be sampling from isn't a nice normal distribution. Now that's actually not going to matter much at all. Because you probably remember this spreadsheet here from my previous video. When the population was a normal distribution, the sample means are also normally distributed. But it doesn't matter what the population looks like. So if the population was a uniform distribution like this one, which was the year levels of students in a school, the sample mean is going to be normally distributed. And if it's a bimodal uh, population, then the sample means will also be normally distributed. It doesn't matter what the population looks like, the sample mean will always be normally distributed. And so that's what we're doing here. So here's the question we're tackling. And you can see that our population isn't any of the ones we just spoke about. Instead, it's this probability density function instead. Actually, now that the words come out of my mouth, it is a uniform uh, distribution. 1 over 20, it's a constant. So it is a uniform distribution. All right, so what do we need to do here? We need to take a sample of 25 from this population of coffee drinks in this case and find out um, will the average of those 25 be more than 173? What's the probability? We know that the sample means are going to be normally distributed. Uh, we don't know the mean yet. We need to find the mean of that. That's math method stuff. All right, but the mean will be here somewhere. Uh, and I'm going to assume that 173 is a number greater than the mean. I don't know if that's true yet or not, but just for the sake of drawing my picture, I'm going to make it true. All right, and that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find that area right there. Now, we are going to have to recall a bunch of our math method stuff here because we need to know the mean of this distribution and we also need to know the standard deviation of this distribution. If you need a reminder, you could Google this video and this guy will show you how to do it. But this is how you find the mean of a probability density function. So to find the mean, it's going to be x times the function with respect to x between 160 and 180 because that's what our density function is between. Again, math method stuff. So work it out, that's equal to 170. Now what is that? That's the mean of our population, which also happens to be the mean of our sample, you should remember that. Which means that I can put that 170 there in my picture, turns out I was correct. The mean is 170, so 173 is going to be to the right. I really need to know my standard deviation. Specifically, I need to know the standard deviation of the sample means, which is not the same as the standard deviation of the population. You know that from previous video. But if I did know the standard deviation of the population, I would be able to figure out the standard deviation of the sample mean. Again, we're going to have to go back to math methods. Now, this guy knows how to do it, and you can Google that video if you want to find out how to find the variance of a probability density function. If you know the variance, the square root of the variance will be the standard deviation. But this is the magic source right there. Here we are using that formula. The standard deviation is equal to the variance, which is the formula we were just looking at. Now, this bit here, we already know that. We know that the expected value is 170. And so that's going to be 170 squared. And that brings us to this bit here, which is going to be the interval between 180 and 160 of, instead of x, x squared, and then the function 1 over 20 with respect to x. Now that's just going to spit out a number. That's a number right there. We subtract one from another, we square root, and we're going to get an answer. All right, now this is where people go wrong because they think that they've gotten everything that they need. But remember, this is the standard deviation of the population. We do not want the standard deviation of the population. We want the standard deviation of the sample mean. And that's going to be equal to that standard deviation, 5.77, divided by the square root of the sample that we're taking. In this case, 25. And that's going to be 1 point something, 1.15. And now what we have is everything that we need to deal with this problem. We have a mean of our sample mean, we have the number that we want to be greater than, 173, and we now have our um, standard deviation of the sample mean equal to 1.15. Alright, so we're trying to find the probability that the sample mean is greater than 173 to the calculator. Okay, probability, distributions, normal CDF. 
And we've got a lower bound of 173, an upper bound of a, a, a million, a mean of 170, and a standard deviation of 1.15. And we get an answer there. Now, it's really at this point you want to think and decide whether you like that number or not. Uh, okay, so we have a uniform distribution. We know that the mean of the distribution is 170. What's the probability that if we choose 25 random things from a population that has a mean of 170, that the average of those 25 things would be greater than 173? Very small, right? Because you're pulling quite a large sample out of there. You would expect that large sample to have a mean the same as the population. For it to be hot, much higher, not a little bit higher, but much higher than that, very unlikely. And we can see that there, it's less than a 1% chance that this actually happens. All right, uh, now this video is about the distribution of the sample mean for other random variables. What I've given you here is a population that is defined by a probability density function. But that's not the only thing that a population could be defined by. If we were interested in some aspect that was like on or off, male or female, to a rough approximation. So in this case, we're essentially talking about sample proportions. Now, you should know from your maths methods work, these two formulas right here. The mean of a sample proportion is P, and the standard deviation is right there. So, now that we've got all of that, we can simply say that the mean of this is the probability of being female here, which is 0.5, and the standard deviation is equal to, put it into our formula, and that standard deviation is 0.05. Now, in this case, that standard deviation is our sample standard deviation, so we don't have to do anything new to it. Now, what we can now do is approximate all of this with our normal distribution. The mean of the population, 50%, is equal to the mean of our sample mean. We have a standard deviation of the sample mean equal to 0 0.05, and we want to know uh, the probability that our sample of 100 people will have less than 0.45 female. So we want that right there. Um, probability that the sample mean will be less than 0 0.45 to the calculator. All right, so the lower bound can be negative a million. The upper bound needs to be 0.45. The mean needs to be 0.5, and the standard deviation is 0.05. And there is our answer right there. Now again, it's a good idea to stop here at the end and ask yourself, does that make sense? A 15% chance, uh, if I pick 100 people, that um, there'll be less than 45 females in that group. 45 or less, I guess. Um, that feels, 15%, that feels reasonable to me that, that you might undercount females slightly. So that feels right. Um, what I've done here is two specific distributions or population distributions. Um, but there are others that you might run into as well. I spotted this question from your textbook where you've got a discrete random variable as your population distribution and you're taking a sample from that. To be able to do that, you would need to remember how to find the mean or the expected value of that discrete random variable. Hopefully you remember how to do that. And you'd have to be able to find the standard deviation of this discrete random variable as well. I hope you know how to do that. If you can do that, you'll then be able to put those expected values and standard deviations into a normal distribution and calculate appropriately. I am not going to do that example here because I think it's a really good chance for you to do something complex and unfamiliar. It's sitting in your textbook ready to go, so you should give it a crack. Um, that is the distribution of sample means for other random variables.